Rega. As I mentioned that I got a new Genesis game. Here it is here. This is Scooby-Doo Mystery. Uh, like I said, this is a, a fairly rare game for the Genesis. And it's actually a really uh, unique type of game to see on a console. I'll show you what I mean by that in just a minute. Uh, got my Genesis 3 here. Got my Commodore 64 monitor. Uh, like I said before, it makes a great monitor for gaming on. Uh, so let's dive into that, shall we? Alright, so here we go. Here's a little uh, little intro screen here. This game came out in 1995. Uh, published by Acclaim. And uh, it was developed by Sunsoft, as we can see here. Uh, I did mention this was a rare type of game to see on the console. And uh, you will see why. Um, this is a point and click adventure game. Uh, we start off here, there's two missions, there's two mysteries to solve. There's basically two levels uh, that you can pick. Uh, you can continue, but uh, it uses really long passwords. It doesn't use like a save memory, uh, which really would have helped this game. But um, here we go. You see the graphics are pretty good for a. Uh, you know, for a Genesis game, they're they're definitely they're definitely really good graphics. I think. It's basically storyline here. You know, you can read this if you want, but uh, of course we don't have time to here. Um, now the first time I saw this game, uh, just seeing this screen right here, it really reminds me of a game called Day of the Tentacle for the PC, you know, back for. Back, uh, back in the DOS days, um, and of course, back in the early '90s, late '80s, early '90s, I've talked about the uh, the point-and-click adventure games before. And uh, as you can see here, this is just like a scum game. This is like a clone of a LucasArts scum game. Uh, you have a very similar interface at the bottom with your commands. Uh, see the little C arrow pointing to the right. Um, that's your inventory. So at any any point in the game, you can press the C button uh, to show your inventory. Um, there weren't uh, there weren't a lot of games like this on on these consoles. Um, you know, like I said, I've talked about these kind of point and click adventure games, these scum games. Uh, in the early '90s, they were really really popular on the on the PC and the Amiga um, in Europe. Uh, games like, you know, Maniac Mansion, and Monkey Island, and, uh, geez, I don't know what, The Dig, and Full Throttle, um, you know, Sierra had the, the King's Quest games, um, and the Space Quest games, um, there was a lot of these point-and-click adventure, create a sentence, uh, LucasArts called them scum, uh, the sentence creation utility for Maniac Mansion, and I've shown you guys Maniac Mansion before, and you know I love Maniac Mansion, and I love Day of the Tentacle, which is the sequel. And like I said, this game looks a lot like Day of the Tentacle. I mean, even even here in this kitchen, uh, the, the graphical style is remarkably similar. I mean, if I saw this for a second, I mean just for a second, if I looked over and saw this. I might almost think it was a Day of the Tentacle, and um, you know these games were always very uh, mouse-driven. They were really, really dependent on a mouse, and um, you know there was a few times they ported these games to the console, um, such as the King's Quest uh, on the Sega Master System. Um, there was King's Quest Five on 
the NES. Um, of course, there was Maniac Mansion on the NES. This is probably one of the more, more known, more popular kind of point-and-click adventure games on a console. Um, but the problem is you're constantly moving the D-pad around, uh, where on a, a PC it's much more um, it's much more natural with a mouse. But what they did what they did in this game is pretty unique. Is unlike Maniac Mansion on the NES or any of the Scum games, where you actually move your character around with the mouse uh, simply by clicking on the screen where you want your characters to move to. Um, in this, you actually just move your character around. You're, you're playing a Shaggy, and um, basically Scooby just follows you around. But you move Shaggy around with the D-pad. You don't you don't just click where you want Shaggy to go like you would in a Scum game. Um, you actually just move him with the D-pad, uh, and then you press uh, B to bring up the pointer. And you only need to use the pointer. Uh, to pick your command and, and, and click on an object on the screen, right? Like if there's something you want to pick up or something in your inventory that you want to use, uh, you bring up the cursor with the, uh, with the B button and the A button cancels that and it goes back uh, to, to controlling Shaggy. So whenever the cursor is not on the screen, you just simply move, move Shaggy around with the D-pad. And um, that helps this game because you're not constantly moving the cursor around you only have to move the cursor around when you actually want to to do an action so I mean to walk around you just walk around it's much more natural for the console um, they did a really really good game uh, really good uh, job with this game and and like I said it's it's pretty rare um, you know it's a little harder to find this game um, for one, I mean, you gotta imagine that these adventure style games, just in general, were never that popular on consoles. I would say Maniac Mansion on the NES was the most popular, and there was a lot of others that tried and they failed miserably. And also this came out in 95, and by 95, maybe those adventure kind of games were fading out. Um, uh, you know, if this came out, maybe a few years earlier I uh, may have done a little better um, but you know the game wasn't very popular I certainly had never seen it um, until I think it was probably about a few years ago uh, so I had never actually seen this game in 95 you know in the mid 90s if I had have seen this game uh, in the mid 90s I probably would have uh, wished that I had a Sega Genesis really badly because you know I grew up with these kind of games and I love these kind of games and um, <clears throat> I don't think there was anything like this on the Super Nintendo um, there was <clears throat> there was Scooby-Doo uh, mystery on the Super Nintendo um, game of the same name um, also published by Acclaim and it may have even been um, it may have even been developed by Sunsoft but it is a completely different game. It's not this style game at all. Uh, I'll show you a, a quick clip of the Super Nintendo version. As you can see, it, it's basically a side scroller, and you can jump. Uh, it plays like a side scroller. It's nothing like this. Uh, it's nothing like this at all. And like I said, I don't think there was a game like this uh, really for the Super Nintendo. At least one that did this well. I mean, they did a really good job with this game. The graphics are really good. The animation is really good. The color is really good. Like I said, the controls are really good. They they found a better way to, to do this style game on the console, where you move your guy around with the D-pad, but use the cursor for the uh, the sentence creation. Works really well. Um, you know, they did a really good job with this game. I almost wondered, you know, when I first saw this game, if... Uh, someone that works at Sunsoft, you know, worked on, you know, LucasArts games. Because it's just such a striking resemblance, and it's almost, it's almost a blatant ripoff. I mean, really, you take, you take Dave the Tentacle and just replace the storyline with, with Scooby-Doo, and you get this game. But, uh, it's an awesome game nonetheless. It's a little rare. If you can find it and you like these kind of games, it's definitely worth picking up.